This video was brought to you by Squarespace. The human brain is a learning powerhouse. From mastering foreign languages to performing intricate physical movements, there seems to be almost no limit what we can learn. Yet, anyone who has struggled to master a new skill knows that our brains are not infinitely flexible. Some abilities come naturally, while others feel impossible to grasp, no matter how much we practice. But does it just come down to not trying hard enough? Or could there be something deeper? Fundamental constraints wired into our neural architecture that make certain patterns of brain activity and thus the resulting behaviors physically impossible to achieve. In this video, we will explore a groundbreaking study published in Nature Neuroscience this January that revealed something remarkable. There are indeed hardware limitations built into our neural circuitry that determine what we can and cannot learn no matter how hard we try. At any given moment, each nerve cell in your brain is either silent or firing an electrical impulse, together creating intricate patterns of activity across millions of neurons. These patterns unfold in time like a carefully orchestrated symphony, driving our behavior. When you reach for a cup of coffee, for example, your neurons follow a specific sequence of planning the movement trajectory and executing it, controlling your muscles with precise timing. The dynamics of these patterns of neural activity flows through your brain like water through a landscape. And just like rivers tend to follow established channels, neural activity might have preferred pathways shaped by our brain's physical wiring. This raises a fundamental question. How flexible are these patterns? When learning a new skill, can our brain generate any sequence of neural activity it needs to? Or are some sequences much harder than others or even outright impossible because of how our neurons are connected and their underlying biophysics? But how can we test this idea scientifically? When you perform any action, millions of neurons are firing in complex patterns all across your brain. Even if we could hypothetically record the activity of all of them, we would still run into a problem that lies at the heart of modern neuroscience. You see, in any scientific field, to understand the rules of a system, you need to systematically test different conditions, formulate hypotheses, and validate them. For instance, if you are studying a new chemical reaction, you might need to separately vary the temperature and concentrations of individual compounds to see how they affect the reaction rate. But when it comes to neural activity, we face a unique challenge. To understand what patterns are hard to learn, we want to systematically test different neural sequences. Maybe start with simple patterns, then try increasingly complex ones, reverse them, shuffle them, speed them up or slow them down. The point is that we want to carefully control which neural sequences our subject is trying to learn, to test specific hypotheses about what makes some patterns harder than others. But there is a fundamental problem. While we can do some kind of systematic testing at the behavioral level, like asking the subject to draw shapes of increasing complexity or learn to press the buttons in a specific sequence, we have no way of knowing what neural pattern each behavior will result in. For example, suppose we wanted to know whether the motor cortex, the movement center of the brain, can generate neural trajectories in reverse order, kind of like rewinding a tape. We might think that asking someone to do the reaching movement in reverse would work. But there is a catch. When you reach forward, your triceps push the arm out. But during the reverse movement, it's the biceps that are doing the work. These are different muscle groups with different neural trajectories, not simply the same pattern being played in reverse. In other words, without direct control and direct access to brain activity, we can't study and test hypotheses about what makes certain neural patterns difficult. So it seems like neuroscience might be hitting a limit. But turns out there is a very clever solution. Instead of trying to design behaviors that might or might not result in certain brain activity patterns we're interested in, what if we make specific neural sequences themselves the very goal of learning? Here is the key idea. What if we could show people their own neural activity in real time? Now, this isn't as far-fetched as it sounds. Think about controlling your heart rate or breathing, 
Normally, these processes happen automatically, without conscious control. But when you hear or see your heart rate on a monitor, your brain gains a remarkable ability to control it voluntarily. This is an example of biofeedback, a phenomenon when you observe some kind of signal from your body in real time, your brain learns how to influence it. And the same principle could work for the neural activity itself. Imagine you could see the activity of a hundred neurons from your brain on the screen in front of you, like a hundred tiny lights flickering on and off. Now, suppose you had some kind of target pattern, a specific sequence of lights you needed to match with your own brain. Even though you have never consciously controlled individual neurons before, with enough practice and feedback, you might learn to generate patterns closer and closer to the target. The key insight here is that our brains are constantly learning through trial and error, and with this kind of very direct feedback, it can quickly identify thoughts and mental strategies that work, developing an intuitive feel for how to control the lights on the screen. However, watching a hundred flickering lights is an overwhelming amount of information to keep track of. And since we can only study individual neurons in monkeys rather than humans, as we'll see shortly, asking them to monitor all these lights is virtually impossible. What if we could simplify it? What if we could reduce the complexity of those hundred lights into something more directly interpretable and intuitive. For example, a cursor moving on the screen. This is exactly how brain-computer interfaces or BCIs work. The computer takes in real-time activations of hundreds of neurons and transforms them through mathematical mapping into a pair of two numbers, X and Y, that drive the cursor position. When you think of something, your neural activity changes and the cursor moves to a new location. Through trial and error and the direct feedback, your brain adapts and learns how to control its own neural activity to align with this mapping in order to achieve the desired movement. By carefully designing this mapping, we can create tasks that require learning to generate specific neural sequences. But how exactly would such a task look like and what can we probe with it? Let's dive deeper into the paper. Speaking of fundamental constraints, Unlike our neural circuits, what if you could build something without limitations? This is where our today's sponsor, Squarespace, comes in. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that transforms the complexity of website creation and management into something anyone can master. While starting a website from scratch can be overwhelming to say the least, Squarespace's new design intelligence feature changes everything. This powerful AI toolkit creates a customized website based on your business and branding, complete with tailored content and images, giving you the perfect foundation to build upon. Every element can be customized using their intuitive drag-and-drop interface, from text content and styling to dynamic animations that bring your story to life. Squarespace is your all-in-one destination for everything online, from building beautiful websites and launching newsletters to setting up online stores and processing payments. Everything integrates seamlessly into one unified system. Experience it yourself with a free trial at squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash autumn to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Imagine you're teaching someone to play a video game, but with a bizarre twist. Instead of using a joystick, they have to control the game, using their thoughts alone. This is pretty much what researchers did with monkeys in their groundbreaking experiment. Monkeys sat in front of a screen showing two targets and a cursor that they needed to move between the targets to obtain rewards. Tiny electrodes in their motor cortex were recording the activity of around 90 neurons and transforming it into the position of the cursor. But what exactly is this transformation? How do you turn the complex symphony of 90 neurons into something as simple as moving the cursor left or right. To answer this, we need to understand how to describe the activity of neural populations. At any given moment, each neuron's activity can be described by a single number, how many electrical impulses it fires per second. With 90 neurons, we get 90 numbers, which together define a point in 90-dimensional space. This is similar to how we can describe the location of an object in our familiar 3D world 
using just three numbers, x, y, and z coordinates. But for the neural case, we will have 90 coordinates. As the neural activity changes over time, it traces out a trajectory in this high-dimensional space. Now, to turn these trajectories unfolding in the neural activity space into two-dimensional cursor movement, researchers used what's called a linear projection. Think about how a three-dimensional object casts different two-dimensional shadows depending on the angle of the light source. Similarly, while we can't visualize the full 90-dimensional space, we can mathematically project it onto different two-dimensional viewing angles, with each projection giving us a different perspective on the neural activity. The experimenters began by finding an intuitive mapping during a calibration session. They had the monkeys watch a cursor movement on its own and recorded their neural activity. This revealed a specific projection, so-called movement intention view, where the neural trajectories looked remarkably similar to the cursor's paths on the screen. When the researchers turned on the brain-computer interface with this mapping, the monkeys quickly learned to control the cursor, moving it smoothly between the targets. At first glance, the overlapping cursor trajectories for leftward and rightward movements might suggest that neural activity is indeed quite flexible. After all, if we see the same path being traced in opposite directions, maybe we could just play the same neural tape in any direction. However, remember that we're only seeing one particular two-dimensional view of the full 90-dimensional activity, which doesn't convey the full picture. For example, imagine looking at a DNA double helix from above. It appears as a simple circle. But when viewed from the side, you see its complex spiral structure. Similarly, looking at the neural activity from a different angle might reveal hidden structure. Indeed, the researchers found another projection, the separation-maximizing view, where the leftward and rightward trajectories appeared completely distinct curving in different directions. This revealed something profound. These movements were not mirror images of each other at the neural level at all. Instead of the same neural path being traversed in reverse, the brain was using an entirely different set of patterns for leftward versus rightward movements. Now, what would happen if monkeys could see this new separation-maximizing view instead? When the group switched the interface to use this mapping, the animals initially began to see their cursor moving in curved paths rather than straight lines. You might expect them to use this visual feedback to modify what commands they send to the interface in order to straighten out the paths. After all, when reaching for an object, we naturally move in straight lines and automatically correct any deviations. Surprisingly, though, the monkeys kept moving the cursor in curved paths, showing no signs of trying to straighten them. This suggests that these neural trajectories might be outside their conscious control, constrained by the underlying brain circuitry. But an alternative explanation might be that perhaps the monkeys simply were not motivated enough to change their activity. After all, they were still getting rewards despite taking longer curved paths. To test this, researchers tried a modification of the task with a specific constraint. The cursor had to stay within a narrow corridor between the targets. The only way to achieve the goal was to make the cursor move in a way that looks like a time-reversed version of one of the previous trajectories. For instance, we know that when moving from red target to blue one, monkey's neurons fired in a specific sequence. Now, to move from blue back to red while staying in the corridor, the brain needed to generate these same patterns, but in reverse order. Even with this strong incentive, the promise of reward and the clear visual indication of the corridor, monkeys could not reverse the natural flow of their neural activity. They consistently failed at the task, suggesting something profound. There are fundamental constraints on how neural activity can flow through the brain. Constraints that even strong motivation and practice cannot overcome. What we have seen today reveals something really profound about how our brains work. Just like a river has channels that water naturally follows, 
physical connections between our neurons create preferred flows of neural activity. While we can learn new skills and adapt our behavior in remarkable ways, there are still some fundamental constraints on neural dynamics that we cannot overwrite, because they are built into the very architecture of our neural circuits. So when we struggle to master new skills, it may be not because of lack of motivation or practice, but because they require playing out specific sequences of neural patterns that go against our brain's intrinsic dynamics. On the flip side, skills that feel natural might be those that work with those intrinsic dynamics rather than against them. But one thing is clear. Our brains are not infinitely flexible computers that can be programmed to do anything. They are biological systems with their own sets of rules and preferences. And understanding those constraints might be the key to understanding why we learn and think the way we do. If you enjoyed the video, share it with your friends, press the like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more interesting neuroscience and machine learning topics coming up.